there it is so from Minerva and today I'm here for a fit video how to fit your Victoria blouse if you've got the Victoria blouse pattern or you've seen it and you fancy making up a casual uh, pullover blouse then today I'm going to go through how you would fit and measure for it so that you can get a successful project the Victoria blouse is a pullover casual blouse it has a v-neck with a, a deep pleat at the centre and the pleat extends to the hem, giving it lots of sort of flow and movement from the bottom. It has a dolman sleeve, so you don't have to insert any sleeves, and that goes to a three quarter length. This is cuffed to give a really nice finish around that hem edge. Great if you're working, you don't have any sort of sleeve in your way. The front here has a facing and the back has a little bias strip and there's a really neat way of joining it all up on the shoulders. The length of the Victoria blouse finishes around mid hip, it's slightly longer at the back so you get a really nice flowy shape. It's great for wearing over leggings, it's really comfortable, it's got that sort of casual look but really if you choose a, a draping fabric you can use it for evening wear with uh, different coloured trousers depending on the fabric that you've chosen so you can take it to casual or uh, a little bit more elevated depending on your fabric choice. This one I'm wearing is size E so it will give you a little bit of an idea of the ease in the pattern. There's a lot of ease in the pattern so this is where our measure and fit videos might come into their own a little bit because you can see how much ease is built into the pattern. I've made mine in a Visco Chalet. This is a Minerva exclusive print. It's called Pandora's Box and it's it really is a Pandora's box of a wide colour palette, lots of abstract patterns, really great for mixing with black. And Visco Chalet is my favourite fabric to make a Victoria blouse with because you can really get that movement and drape from all of the pattern features. If you would like to choose a different fabric because you're not so confident with a viscose chalet then you can check out Vicky's video here where she gives you some fabric suggestions for the Victoria blouse it's a little bit of a wider range there so she, you can see the drape and the hand of the fabric I have made a Victoria blouse in a stretch uh, fabric as well even though the pattern is full woven and that works too if you have your Victoria blouse pattern and you are ready to cut out and you're thinking you just want a little bit more help then you can check out uh, Diane's video here. It's a sew along, it's on the YouTube channel or over on the Minerva feed on our website. She takes you through the pattern from start to finish, no changes, uh, no adaptation. She just shows you the construction process and it might be useful if you're struggling here with this little pleat at the front. It's quite easy, but it's really nice if somebody shows you how to do it. The first thing you need to do is to measure yourself and you'll need to measure your upper bust, your bust and your hips and waist. We're going to do that now, collect our measurements and then we can take a look at the size chart. Before you start your pattern you need to know which size so you're going to take your body measurements. The measurements in the pattern are in inches and in centimetres. You can use a flexi tape measure or I like this hemline one which has a little plastic knob on the end so I can let go and read the measurement. First measurement we're going to take is our high bust. When you relax and breathe out you need to be able to still get your tape measure underneath. The high bust measurement does dip down at the back because it's taking into account your upper rib cage size. This is really important if you've got a large bust because you don't want to just take your overall bust measurement because that might mean it's too big around your shoulders. Write that number down. Next you're going to take your full bust measurement. So that's around the fullest part of your bust and this time you want to really try and keep your tape measure nice and parallel so that this line is straight. You don't want it to be dipping down or rising up. Write that measurement down. <clears throat> Next you're going to take your waist measurement. This needs to be um, 
not where you want your waist or where you think um, fashion dictates your waist is. It needs to be at the point where when you bend and when you sit and when you move around, it's the soft part. Take into account that if you're sitting down, you might get a little bit of spread. So make sure that when you sit down, you still have a comfortable fit where you can put your fingers underneath. Write this measurement down. Lastly, you're going to take your hip measurement and that's going to be the widest part of your body. It will account for your bottom, it will account for your stomach, it will account for your width across your hips. If you've got a fuller tummy at the front, then you want to make sure that you're going over the fullest part. And take this measurement. Once you've got your measurements, we can take a look at the size chart. Here you'll see the shape of the Victoria blouse. That might give you a little bit of an idea of where the larger areas of ease are going to be. There's a really great diagram that shows you all of the features. It gives you little details of where you might find there's extra room or volume that you might need to increase or decrease. There's some fabulous fit information. So it tells you how to take your body measurements, your high bust, full bust, waist and hips. And a Victoria blouse pattern and all Minerva exclusive patterns are drafted for a five foot six frame. That's 167 centimetres tall. I love that on Minerva exclusive patterns, you can find a, a bust fit, which is really useful because you can't just have a pattern drafted for one cut size because people are lots of different sizes. So the pattern is split into two sections. There is the Mrs. versions, which are A to J and they're drafted for a B cup. And Minerva's women's sizes K to T and they're drafted for a D cup. And the way they found that out is you take away your high bus measurement from your full bus measurement, find out the difference, and then you can find here which size bracket you need to be in. It will also help you to understand, will my bus measurement fit in the ease of the pattern or do I need to make any further alterations? Once you've got your sizings, you then want to transfer them onto the pattern. I was obviously doing a little bit of looking. I know that I'm around this area. So I'm going to transfer my sizes onto the pattern. Don't worry if your sizes don't all fit in one uh, size. They don't. They might be all over the place. You might have proportions that put your bust higher than your waist or your waist wider than your bust or hip. You might have a wider hip than waist or your hip and waist might be really similar and your bust might be smaller. So just be honest and put your measurements in on the chart. As you can see, mine fit around the G area. And I'm not too worried about this one, that the I one is... Um, a little bit bigger because of the shape of the overall pattern. If this was a fitted pattern, then I might have more concern about that. You can see how much ease is allowed in the pattern because if I draw in the body underneath, there's all of this space here and here. And that's why the viscose uh, chalet works really well because that all collapses and makes a really nice drape. So you've got a, a large amount of ease in the side bust and the waist and the, at the upper hip. I found when I made this, it was a little bit big around my neck. So on my 12 version, um, my V-neck was really, really low. And that's where I, I had to make a little alteration. I put a camisole top in. So and then I decided to size down. I had to go at an F1. But actually, there's so much ease in the pattern that I found I've really enjoyed making size E. You'll only know by making your first one. So you can decide to either make a toile um, out of a, a similar fabric to the one you'd want to use in the end. You could try a wearable toile where you use a fabric that you definitely wear, but it's not going to be your final garment. And then you can choose between the sizes. 
if I did make a G, I could make a neckline alteration and just enjoy wearing that oversized fit and style. So I'd have really nice sort of swinging hem and lots of volume around the bust and in that underarm dolman sleeve. Or I can size down and have a more fitted top, which is the one that I'm wearing in the video, where the neckline is much neater, the sleeves are a little bit smaller, there's not so much ease in that area. So decide if you want to make an oversized Victoria blouse, a Victoria blouse with intended ease, or you want to size down. The best way to decide how much ease you're going to have is to now transfer your measurements to the finished garment measurements. This to me is the most important part of any size chart. If I look at my bust measurement here, which is 38, actually this has 37 and three quarters, but mine was 38. If I look in G, it says 46 inches. So my 38 bust would definitely fit in a 46 inch finished circumference. And this is how I can change down so easily to this E, because if I put my 38 bust in this one, in size E, then it's a 43 and a half overall finished bust. I mean, I could go right down here, couldn't I? But then I'm going to have some problems with the sleeve fit maybe and the shoulder fit. So here, I decided that my 38 bust will fit in this 43 and a half inch finished garment bust measurement. My waist is 33. So if I look here, I can get 33 inches comfortably in this 43 and a quarter waist finish. So I definitely know my measurement will fit in there. And my 41 inch hip will definitely fit in this 44 inch finished measurement. So that's how I took my measurements from an obvious G and I sized down two times. You might look at that and think, how on earth did she end up with a size E when she was way up here? Well, I checked my measurements against the finished garment measurements. Don't find it too frustrating that I've been talking about myself here and my own measurements. You can follow exactly the same procedure either in the women's section or the misses section by putting on your measurements and then transferring them to the finished garment measurements and deciding how much ease you want. That's how you use the sizing charts. One of the sizing things that you might need to change is for your height. So I'm going to go over to the cutting table, show you a few of the pattern pieces and show you where you can change the Victoria blouse in terms of height to a place where you can shorten or lengthen your pattern pieces. The pattern does include lengthen and shorten lines, but uh, you can do that. And the thing you need to sort of have in your mind when you're making any lengthening and shortening shortening it on a pattern is where the notches are because you don't really want to disturb those so if you can keep those where they are and if you wanted to lengthen then I would recommend lengthening between the side notch and the split so you would take a line here if you just add some to the bottom then you've got to remeasure and reposition your split detail so it's better to take a cut here insert some paper in and drop that down so that you can get a lengthening line but you haven't altered where the notch is and you won't have altered how that matches up with another piece. Of course you can lengthen the sleeves so it's a dolman sleeve I've got a couple of lines on here that I've used before so this line here I've used as my long sleeve which seems ironic because I'm making it shorter but I cut this line and added a long sleeve. I've cut along this line and made it short sleeve. Or you can leave it as it is and have a three quarter sleeve. If you want to change up the sleeve hem and not have a hem band, you can extend that by the length of the hem band. So here you can change the sleeve length and here you can change the uh, overall length. If you want to make it shorter, Again, that is the same place to make it shorter. And then you will need to true up the seam. 
Remember, whatever you do to the front, you will then need to do to the back. If you've not seen any of my other videos, this little bit here is where I have raised the neck. So when I had the V-neck on me, it came down too low, way past uh, where I wanted it to be. So I've added a little bit on and that's in another video. If you would like some inspiration for the Victoria blouse, then it's a good idea to head over to Minerva. If you use the hashtag Victoria blouse, you'll see how other people have made it and you'll see what size they chose, how much ease they chose to put into their garment and also a few little hacks or uh, different changes for sizing or body proportion. I've got a few up on my screen here. So this one has been changed into a beach cover up. So from that lengthen and shorten line that I showed you, that's been lengthened a long way um, so that you can throw it over the top of a bikini or a swimsuit. It's a really great idea um, for a holiday wardrobe piece. This version is quite long. The wearer has chosen to have plenty of ease in this garment. They've used a border print, so they wanted to show off that border print as much as they could. So they've gone for the real swing of the hem there. It looks really beautiful. I've got the three quarter sleeve and they've really incorporated the border print in that um, uh, pleated hem of the Victoria blouse. And that's used a cotton fabric, a really light cotton lawn here. So she's got a slightly different fit. She's gone a little bit smaller. So you can see her sleeves aren't quite as drapey and she's not getting the drape from the fabric, but she's got a sort of neater Victoria blouse. You can size up and really incorporate the ease of the blouse and you can also change the hem so you could take it asymmetrically if you want to. You can um, you can get quite a lot of fullness by uh, the pleat here so you can change the pleat a little bit and make that a little bit deeper and that will give you more swing in the hem. If you lengthen the Victoria blouse you can use it as a layering piece so here it's used um, on top of some other items of clothing. So I'm wearing um, this on its own today, but here you can see there's a long sleeve t-shirt underneath and you'll get the sort of the, the sleeve coming below here and the neck bit here and you can sort of put it over the top of some other garments. It looks really great if you want to show off your pattern print. You can take the ease down so you get a much more fitted blouse. Um, so this version here is a Visco Chalet in a uh, bubble uh, fabric it's beautiful this fabric it's one of my favorites and this one hasn't got so much ease and width so you have to be careful if you size down you can size down for the shoulders and the bust and you'll get less swing in the hem but you need to make sure that the sleeves aren't too tight around here so that you've still got movement I mentioned you could make the top in a stretch fabric and here it's been made in one of our sweater knits our sweater knits are quite a lightweight fabric they're not a really thick uh, stretch like um, uh, a French terry. They're a really light uh, stretch fabric and they've got more stretch in one direction than the other so you need to make sure you cut it correctly. But it looks really great here, really cosy and comfortable. Makes a really nice casual top. You don't have to use a pattern fabric. I've used a white cotton here and I've made a short sleeve version with um, the sort of elasticated uh, cuff here. So you get a summer version and I've used a little camisole insert there which was initially my way of dealing with the lower neckline. Mine is much shorter so although I've kept the ease of uh, size E I have made it a lot shorter because um, I'm quite short and it really changed the body proportions of me within the Victoria blouse. It meant that I could wear it with jeans rather than using it as a sort of uh, pullover over the top of leggings. I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration to go and check out our Minerva makers and what they've been up to with the Victoria blouse pattern. If you've made your first Victoria blouse and you're really pleased with it but you want to mix it up a little bit and change some of the styling then you can check out our hacking videos. They're really useful if you want to change up the body proportions in one place, if you alter for a disability, if you want to change up the style because you want to wear it for a different event, if you want to add a different feature or take a feature away depending on your fabric choice. So those will pop up on the feed if you use the hashtag Victoria Blouse. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for joining me today. I hope that gives you a little head start or a little bit of confidence to cut out your Victoria Blouse, get measured up and cut the pattern that you sizes that you would like. 
when you've finished it we would love to see you over at the Minerva website so do make a free account with us share your makes there a little photo a description and you can share which uh, fabric you have chosen it's a real interest to us and it really inspires the Minerva makers you could also join the craft club over there where you will receive discounts and offers throughout the year do come back for more uh, hacking videos, learn to sew videos and lots and lots of pattern and fabric inspiration from Minerva.